God has given all of us a mission to make disciples here and everywhere for the glory of God. But sometimes it can feel difficult to find our place and purpose in that mission. Minus 10, 9. Our church is located on the Space Coast of Florida. In our backyards, we can see rockets being launched all the time. We want our church to be a launch pad for sending people out on the mission God has for them. Here at First Baptist Melbourne, we have a goal that we call Launch 10X. Our vision is to plant 10 churches, send out 100 missionaries, train 1,000 leaders, and make 10,000 disciples in the next 10 years. The purpose of the Mission Control Podcast is to share stories from within our First Baptist Melbourne faith community of people who are living out the vision of Launch 10X. Regardless of who you are, we all have a role to play. We are all involved in God's story. We pray that the story shared through Mission Control will encourage you to see how God is calling you to be used by Him. Thanks for joining us here in Mission Control today. My name is Amanda, and I'm the Communications Director here at First Baptist Melbourne and the host of this podcast. Today in Mission Control, we have Jenna Cobb with us. Jenna has served on our missions committee here at the church for over 10 years and is currently also serving as a trustee for the International Mission Board. If you don't know what any of those things mean, it's okay because I didn't really either, but Jenna does an excellent job explaining more of what those jobs entail and how God has been working in those places. I had the pleasure of getting to know Jenna better when she asked my husband and I to join a team she was leading for an exploratory trip to South Asia a few years ago. It is clear to me that Jenna cares deeply about the mission field and about the people God has placed in her life. In our conversation today, we talk about how missions takes more than just missionaries and how God is always faithful to provide opportunities to engage in what He's called you to do, even if you're in a season where it's easy to feel stuck. Well, hey, Jenna, thanks for joining me this morning. Well, thank you, Amanda, for asking. Yeah, of course. So before we kind of get into it, where is the farthest you've traveled for a mission trip or just in general? I have traveled to India. Ah. That is like on the other side of the globe. Have you been back since we went together? No, I haven't. That was 2019? It was 18, 18. actually. Oh, man. Can you believe it's been that long? I like it. Everything's before COVID. And then for me, also before kids. Yes. Yeah. um, I was actually scheduled to go the summer of 2020. I had three international trips planned that year, and they all crashed and burned because of COVID, but and it's been hard to get things moving since then. But uh, yeah. I I hope to go this year. Have you been international since COVID? Then I have not actually. Oh, okay, yeah. So um, kids for you, little people, but for me, I um, had my oldest graduate last year, and then my second is graduating this year. So that kind of ties me down close to home while yes. we navigate choosing college and all that kind of stuff. Fair but, enough. Yeah. So where does God have you on mission right now? Well, I am serving um, on the missions committee here at First Baptist Melbourne, and I was trying to think back on how long I've been on that committee, and I couldn't remember exactly when I got started, but I think it's probably been maybe 10 years I've been serving on that committee oh, now. Man. And um, and then I am also serving um, as a trustee for the International Mission Board with uh, the Southern Baptist Convention. And I am in my seventh year of an eight-year term of that, so I'm almost um, finished with that job. But... Um, but it's been very rewarding uh, serving in both areas. And of course, some some mission trips sprinkled in there, some some other various little things along the way that uh, opportunities that pop up to uh, bless and, and uh, take care of missionaries. Um, of course, our missions committee uh, plans and executes the, um, with the help of the pastoral staff, the uh, engage world missions conference every year Mm -hmm. here at our church and each one is just a real joy to be a part of when you say you serve as a trustee i feel like people either have a lot of knowledge of what that means or absolutely none i'm kind of like more towards the absolutely none what does that look like what does that mean so uh the 
trustee board for the International Mission Board um, are basically representatives from the 45,000 uh, Southern Baptist churches. Okay. And there are about uh, between 70 and 80 of us, depending on um, the numbers of churches within each uh, area or each state association. So okay. e- our uh, Florida is allotted five representatives based on our church numbers here. And uh, basically, we uh, were just a mixture of um, lay people for, and uh, association heads. Uh, there's pastors. But basically, we're just, um, they try to get a good mixture of representatives from all of the churches. And our job is to just make sure that the money that uh, Southern Baptists give to the cooperative program that gets allotted to the IMB and also the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, which goes 100% of those funds go to um, our missionary efforts, our collaborative missionary efforts, um, gets spent well. Uh And um, we also are basically the hiring boss of the president of uh, the IMB. Um, So we just sort of oversee and just make sure that everything is functioning well, that uh, they're being good stewards of those funds that come in. They're they're taking care of our missionaries well. And uh, the IMB has a long history of being, it's it's said on the street that it's the Cadillac organization uh, for missionary sending, um, just because uh, we do we do it very well, and that's that's a testament to the praying people in the pews, the giving people in the pews, um, the pastors that are raising up, uh, not just future missionaries, but also people who uh, work and pour into taking care of those missionaries. So there's a there's a good sized staff in Richmond, Virginia that uh, takes care of these missionaries, and they do everything from making sure that they have emergency medical treatment they, um, to uh, good retirement packages. They take care of their kids when they're headed off to college. They, um, they just uh, they take care of their parents. They, they just do so much to make sure that these missionaries can thrive and that they can do one thing, and that's share the gospel and build up uh, future leaders for the gospel within the the countries that they're serving so that when they leave, they know that the gospel is planted deeply and it's going to continue um, among the nationals there. So... How did this opportunity kind of present itself to you? Well, um, so our pastor, Scott Wilson, was on the nominating committee. When when there's an opening in a state, um, I think the association just pulls together a nominating committee, and they find someone who um, sort of has like a mission focus, who they believe would be a good representative of their churches. And um, I hear that I was picked number two. (laughs) (laughs) Does it like humble you? (laughs) Well, it was apparently it was going to be Brother Larry at first, oh, but, but he has his uh, he had his mission from God, right? Okay. And he he turned it down because he wanted to focus on what God is is having him do, which gotcha. is to pour into pastors um, around the globe in places that uh, where they can't get um, a lot of deeper. Uh, scriptural mm-hmm. training. So um, we love Pastor Larry and what he's doing. Um, but yes, I was pick number two. So I was happy to to fill in and, and serve the time. So you, this is year seven, you said, right? Yes. Of year, okay. Yeah. That's cool. What are some of the coolest things you've been a part of? Well, I'll tell you, um, it's, it's interesting because um, as a trustee, we get to know um, a lot of the things that we can't actually reveal to the rest of sure. uh, the church just be just for security reasons. Sure, sure. And so um, while it's a great privilege, I also feel like it's a heavy responsibility because um, my insight should drive me to pray deeper and more faithfully be, because I know about things that that we can't actually share mm-hmm. um, in prayer request form right <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that has been um, something that's been very special to the job um, but also um, 
for me personally, I'll just uh, share this quick little story. Um, the trustees are all divided into different affinities okay. around the globe. Define and affinity. An affinity is an area, um, generally <clears throat> a continent or generally a continent, but not necessarily. Um, but it's it's an area of the world where we're supposed to sort of focus on. So gotcha. we hear details, we break into committees, and we hear details about that specific area. And I remember going into my first year, um, first year trustees don't get to choose where they go. They're, okay. they're assigned. Okay. And I remember being handed my envelope, and I remember this little thought go through my mind, like, well, Lord... You know that I have heartstrings tied to everywhere in the world except for South Asia. So <laughs> just not not South Asia, right? And I open it up and lo and behold, there South is Asia. South Asia. <laughs> and I, I had to laugh. I laughed out loud because I was like, Of course you would do that. You, yeah. And I heard, you know, I heard the Holy Spirit just tell me, I'm gonna teach you to love these people too. And my goodness, when you let the Lord change your heart. He does. And within the year of praying for those people, praying for the people who work amongst them, um, going yeah. like we did, right? Uh, it just, I love those people. And now I feel a stronger kinship almost and attention to them. And I, ever since that year, I have asked to be on that South affinity Asia. Okay. of South Asia. That that is where my heart sits right now. And That's it's cool. um you know we can we can be fearful of places, we can be fearful of things, but but if you let the Lord take over and and just follow him in obedience, he does an amazing work and in me, he did an amazing work in me. So it's uh, it, that has been something that being on the the trustee board, yeah. I, th I don't think I ever would have gotten that opportunity, and I may never have gone through that heart change if I had not been a part of it. Yeah, that's cool. So, have you always kind of had a heart for missions, or has this come from? How has this developed? Well, when I was a little girl, I was blessed to grow up in a very missions-focused church in Atlanta, and every year they they had their own uh, World Missions Conference, and I looked forward to it like it was Christmas coming. I okay. just I was always so excited. They they did an international dinner where you could sit with. Um, missionaries that had come in from different parts of the world. Um, there would be representatives from different cultures that would come, and the music was always wonderful, and the booths were beautiful where you could just go up and touch things from that part of the world. And it was, um, it was dazzling to me that there was so much uh, variety and um, just – beauty all over the world in all of these different kinds of people. So I guess that that sort of um, started it for me and just uh, the fact that I was in a congregation that loved missions and was focused on it. Um, but I remember as a teenager, uh, there was a, a guest speaker and that particular church had a a balcony, and I was sitting way up in the very far right corner of the balcony, and there was hardly anybody else around me. And I just remember the speaker uh, started pointing into the congregation and saying, you, you're called to missions. You, you're called to missions. And he points way up in that corner, right, right <laughs> at like me. like looking around like someone else. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, you, you're called to missions. And I just remember in that moment, um, knowing that I had a job with missions. And of yeah. course, um, anyone who reads the scriptures, and we have all heard over and over that where Jesus says in Matthew 28, 19, go into all the world. He was talking to all of his, all of his children, all of mm -hmm. his people, all his disciples there. And um, so the job was given to all of us, but I guess it really hadn't clicked for me until that moment that you, you, Jenna, you're, yeah. you're called to missions. But at the same time, um, while I was, I, I believe that my mind and my heart was wide open to missions as in being called to full-time missionary work. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I I did sort of know. I had this this knowing that that was not what God wanted me to do. He had other things for me to okay. do. So I guess along all along the the years, I have just kept my ears and my heart very open to whatever he brought along. Um, because at that point, I had been educated by my pastors, Sunday school teachers, everyone around me that missions takes more than just the missionary. It takes everyone in the church. And mm-hmm. there's many different jobs that that actually fulfills the Matthew 28, 19 call. Yeah. And so um, I've just all along the way um, been open to whatever God has brought along my path for missions. When So you were in Atlanta at that time. What was that journey after for you? Like what was that next step in your mind? Well, um, I had been on my first mission trip was to Romania okay. um, with the Beals, believe it or not. They they actually ended up in, in our church down here. Okay. I remember sitting in service and seeing the back of their heads and thinking, I know those people <laughs> <laughs> because I had been on a mission trip with them. And then, of course, they led our church into a work in Romania for okay. several years, which uh, we got to be a part of the, the uh, building of camp. Pope and all yeah. of that. Um, so that that was very exciting to re- reunite with them later. But um, but I did go on my first mission trip, um, and it was very eye opening to me. I think that the most poignant uh, thing that I remember from that trip was a sense of kinship with other believers in other countries. And since it was my first time out of the country um, and everything was so new and foreign to me, I think that being in in the church service with the believers there, um, especially I was there shortly after the fall of uh, the Iron Curtain. So a lot of these people had been through very, intense persecution and suffering, uh, those people were there because they wanted Christ. It was not comfortable for them yeah. to to want Christ, but they were there. They had made the choice. They had they had counted the cost and they they bore the scars of it. Um, and I just remember a tremendous, even though I couldn't understand the language that they were praying in and preaching in, um, I felt a tremendous sense of brotherhood and home, even there. And as a teenager, that was very um, impactful to me. It continued to open my mind to um, the kingdom of heaven being a global, mm-hmm. all-encompassing uh, gift. Mm-hmm. And while we know that, sitting in our pew, we're, we're reading it, you know it in a deeper sense when you're actually in a different culture, in a completely different place on the planet, and you have that same sense of of home amongst other believers. Mm-hmm. What kind of roadblocks did you face as you kept going forward? You said that you mentioned that you kind of knew maybe it wasn't full-time missionary work, but it was something else. What roadblocks kind of stood in your way as you explored that and figured that out? Well, I um, I got married and I started having young children. <laughs> yes. Roadblocks can be beautiful. That's right. And um, I do remember when my youngest, my o- older two were were babies. They were in that ba- your your kids stage. Yes. I do remember feeling um, a sense of uh, helplessness because I I just couldn't go anywhere or um, do anything. I felt helpless to ministry work. And the Lord gave me the idea of starting a um, neighborhood playgroup for moms with stay-at-home moms with little kids my age. I walked my neighborhood and noticed that there were many houses with diaper boxes in their (laughs) trash. So I made a mental note of those houses and I um, filled out these little invitations. That's cool. And we start I started a um a in home uh once a week. How old were your group. kids at this point? I think well Griffin would have been in diapers. So um I wanna say 
two and six months, maybe. Okay, so very young. Very young, yes. I was very stuck. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, but the, the awesome thing was that um, our neighborhood happened to be very multicultural because okay. we live kind of close to Florida Tech. And, um, and so we had up to, I think at one time we had 21 moms on our roster That's uh, cool. with all these little people and almost all the continents were re- represented. That's cool. And there were many gospel conversations through the years. It went on for, for several years until our kids started going to school, okay. actually. So it was it was a beautiful thing. God, I'm, I feel like... You know, when God puts something inside of you, He's going to. He did it for a reason, mm-hmm. and so um, he he heard my little desperate plea, I guess, for something to do for Him <laughs> while yeah. while I was stuck at home, and and that's what He gave me. So how often did you meet? Once a week. Once a week. Yep. And we would just rotate from house to house. You well, that's know, cool and, too. That others kind of took on. It was this common ownership of the group. Almost yes, it yes. feels like. And there were a few other believers in that group, and um, so it was it was just a wonderful time. And like I said, almost all the continents were represented. We had a very multicultural play group. It was wonderful. It was a wonderful time. Awesome. Have you kept in touch with any of those women or kids? A few, a few, but um, some of them went back to their home countries. Fair. Some of them um, moved away to other states. So, um, yeah, it's uh, – but – you know, there's a few still living in in the neighborhood, and That's now cool. we're now we're talking. You know, we we bump into each other and we talk about our kids away at college, <laughs> <laughs> different season. That's right. <laughs> That's awesome. What advice would you have for someone who is feels that call to missions doesn't even know what that means for them or what that could look like? Well, um, certainly you're going to start praying about it because. If God is sort of drumming that up in your heart, then He has a plan and a purpose, mm-hmm. and um, and then get into the Word. If you're not already in the Word, like you need to, you need to know the Scriptures. You need to know this message deeply. Um, but talk to your pastor. Talk um, if you don't feel like you can just go to a pastor, talk to somebody, somebody will be able to get you, um, with someone who can help you find that path that God is planning for you. Um, so, uh, sometimes, um, you know, like we always need to jump at obe- in obedience to what God is calling us to do. Sometimes, uh, in our, in that pursuit, you know, He's going to reveal quickly what He wants you to do. Sometimes He wants to see uh, a persistence in your obedience. Um, whether you're just going to, you know, at the first bump in the road or the first hurdle, you're just going to throw up your hands and say, "Oh well, I tried," and I'm going to yeah. go and do something else. I have else. young kids; yeah. I can't do anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, but if you keep pursuing and you keep asking Him, He's going to show you. Sometimes it's um, that it's not for a few, a few more years, right? And mm-hmm. He wants you busy praying and and studying the scriptures, completing something else that He's asked you to do first. You know, to get get through that first, but. Um, But yeah, you just, you do have to just begin fervently praying, asking for his will, and then um, talk with someone who can help guide. So you have one year left as a trustee. What do you kind of see ahead of you? Any ideas? Well, I have um, learned to not get anxious because there's always going to be something that yeah. he'll have me do. So yes, I remember, um, I think sometime last year, I just remember calculating out, well, I'm going to end up an empty nester and the IMB job will be finished and <laughs> I'm going to have nothing to do. It's just like the season of like <laughs> completion, yes. like now what? Um, but I I know the Lord enough to know that he is is. I'm probably going to stay just as busy, if not busier, and we'll just see what's around the corner. I don't, I, I'm not even going to try to suppose or or come up with stuff because it, 
Most of the things that he's given me to do, I had no idea even existed or or could have never imagined. Yeah. So I'm I'm just going to leave open. it to him. <laughs> okay. Do you have any upcoming trips planned, mission trips? I do want to go back to South Asia this year. And um, so I get Griffin off to college and then I will plan something <laughs> okay. in the fall. Um, but... Uh, but after that, um, you know, our our partnership in South Asia um, really could use just a continuous stream of help. Yeah. And so if maybe that's what I'm going to be able to do at this point is just go a couple times a year even. I, um, I'm willing. I would love that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, of course, we'll have to just – I don't want to go unless the Lord wants me there. Yeah. Right? So we'll we'll just have to see – what what comes down the pike. Fair enough. Okay, and finally, what advice would you have for someone who's feeling that call to make disciples here and everywhere for the glory of God? Well, good for you for recognizing one of your jobs yeah. <laughs> as a believer. Um, but yes, uh, I would say start praying about it. Um, and also, it probably would be a good idea for you to start uh, f- f- get a few specifics to pray for, even if. Um, and I'm not talking about yourself. I'm talking about like an unreached people group, similar to how God kind of broadened your horizons for South Asia. Right. Yeah. You want. Um, in uh, you can talk to any of our pastors on staff, or you can contact the IMB imb.org to go in and find a list of unengaged, unreached people groups who don't have access to the gospel message. Start praying for a specific group, and just pray faithfully for it. Um, and then you could also. Um, find a missionary to pray for and start conversing with them. They um, Loneliness on the field is uh, a very common thing. So just hearing, hey, I, I woke up, you were on my mind today, I'm praying for you, I'm, you know, um, this verse really touched me, or how are the kids doing, you know, mm-hmm. anything specific I can pray for, how's that one with uh, his schoolwork or whatever, mm-hmm. just, just to be their friend. Um, little quick little email or text um, will brighten their day and it will give you um, a purpose right here and now while you're still trying to find what what your role is Mm -hmm. but to be the church to that missionary um, would bless them while it's blessing you and getting getting your heart even more um, malleable in the Lord's hands to yeah. whatever He has for you in the future. That's key. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for sharing with us today. My pleasure. I enjoyed our conversation. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for listening to this episode of Mission Control. If you're interested in learning more about Launch 10X and the different ways to get involved in what God is doing here at First Baptist Melbourne, A great place to start would be visiting our website, launchme.church. On our next episode of Mission Control, we have Eric Axum joining us. Eric serves on staff here at the church on our Groups and Connections ministry teams, alongside Pastor Scott Terry and Dennis Smith. We have a great conversation about the broader context of what it means to live on mission and how God can use anyone and any season for His glory. Until then, I hope you have a great week on mission with King Jesus.